and this is my package. I had to order it from GameStop because it was the only uh, cheaper one that I found. These things are like hundreds of dollars and I didn't want to spend that much. So I ended up spending like 57 or something like that with my pro membership. Um, and it's used copy. Now, I don't know how this is going to be. The first thing I noticed right off the cuff, right out of the mailbox is, uh, here it's like, it's like bouncing around. Like it's not, um, yeah, it's not fully stable. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. I spent $53 on this thing and I don't want it to go to waste. So yeah, so I'm going to open it up. Here, Parker, come on over here and hold this phone for me, please. Just hold this for me while I while I open this, please. Yep, just hold, uh, watch your finger because the, the lens is right there. So just watch your finger. Just hold it the best you can, all right? I'll get my help here just because I'm going to open it up. We're going to see... I don't know, like, I'm just I'm just nervous about the about that, how it's shaking around. And um, see, I got the receipt here. Hopefully it's not going to... Wait, this is, this is, yeah, this is a thing of sale because I sold it. Alrighty, all right, I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna see, oof, I don't like how it's just not even attached. All right, so the disc is, a few fingerprints on it, doesn't look bad. All right, let me just um, get some of those smudges off, you know, and then I'll pop it in my PlayStation and see how well it works, but, okay, so far, I don't know if can you see the, yeah, can you see the disc? It doesn't look too bad, I think. It actually, it actually looks pretty clean if you look at it. It looks pretty clean, so I don't know wow. if, uh, yeah, I mean, it might, it might be okay. Um, let's see if it snaps into place there. Let's take a look at the back, or well, the front, rather. So this is the game, and here's the back. And, you know, I got it from GameStop, from the online GameStop, and then, uh, and then yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pop this baby in. You see, now it's actually pretty pretty stable. For some reason, I don't know how, but it, like, popped out or something, like, in travel or whatever. But, but okay, there we go. So we will be playing this bad boy. Hey, quick question. Who here owns the game Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan? Anybody? Raise your hands. If you raised your hands, you're quite silly. Instead of raising your hands, just comment down below if you've actually played this game before or if you own it. So this game was released May 24th, 2016 for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Windows, Xbox 360, and Xbox One, and I have to say it was a good time. So you can call this number. This game is not exactly like the classic turtle games because there is no couch co-op. In fact, this is actually the first game with no couch co-op. But there is an online co-op, which kind of makes up for it, even now because people still play this game online today. That actually surprised me after I was done beating the game. I went to the multiplayer mode just to kind of see what it was and it was online and I'm like there's no way people are still playing this and there was I actually got into a game and played for a good while with three other people it was pretty cool so you're probably wondering where is this game gone and why can't you get it digitally anywhere well that's not exactly clear I'm guessing that the licensing just probably expired and since the game was poorly received by critics and game reviewers Platinum Games and Activision probably just decided not to renew the license hey Hey, wake up. Mm. You gotta tell them to subscribe. Uh, subscribe <clears throat> to Out of the Hat Gaming and like the video and, and, and ring the notification bell so I can go back to my phone. So now let's turn to this article that I just found the other day. It's from Polygon.com and the article was published January 4th, 2017. And as the article's title states, Platinum's Ninja Turtles game pulled from digital stores after less than a year. Which that to me is just crazy. But the article goes on and says Platinum's game's poorly received action game based on the Ninja Turtles Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan is no longer available for sale digitally. The game appears to have been pulled from all digital retailers less than 8 months after it first went on sale. So Mutants in Manhattan was released May 24th, this is crap that I've already mentioned in this video, but as of this week, which is back in 2017, this game is no longer listed available for sale on the PlayStation Store, Steam, or Xbox Games Store. The game is not available digitally through the Humble Store, whatever that is, or Amazon, though physical copies of Mutants in Manhattan are still available for purchase from the latter retailer. And as I was explaining earlier, it's not clear why the Mutants in Manhattan was unceremoniously delisted digitally, but in many cases, expired licensing deals are mostly to blame. 
digital versions of The Amazing Spider-Man and The Amazing Spider-Man 2, both Activision published titles, were also recently removed from stores. A similar situation happened with Activision's Deadpool, which was also delisted from digital retailers in 2014, only to return the following year. In Polygon's negative review of Mutants in Manhattan, editor-at-large Justin McElroy, however you say that name, called the so shaded action game both mind-numbingly dull and insultingly repetitive and the most insipid brawler in recent memory. And yes, I did actually have to look up what insipid means. Insipid means lacking of qualities that interest, simulate, or challenge. Dull, flat, lacking taste or savor, tasteless. Mm, that's quite insipid. I really feel like that guy was a little bit harsh on this game because I actually thought the game was pretty good. IGN was also very harsh with a 4.9 out of 10 and Metacritic only gave this game a 44%. It just goes to show you don't listen to critics in some cases. But with that being said, why don't we turn to the actual consumer, the people that have actually played this game other than just myself, the people that actually matter. Besides Out of the Shadows from 2013, this is also one of the best TMNT games of all time and I still play it today in 2019. I seriously hope more games are made in the future. As a suggestion, the next TMNT video game should be either based off of Mirage Studio Comics or the trilogy of the 1990s movie. Now that would be epic. And I completely agree. Not a bad game, don't get what all the hate's about. Even as a non-hardcore Turtles fan, I've been wanting to play this on my PC simply because it's made by Platinum Games, whom I'm a big fan of since Bayonetta. 6.9 out of 10. That's certainly better than IGN's score. One of my favorite Ninja Turtle games ever because Nolan North does a pretty good job as Leonardo. He even sounds identical to Cam Clark from the original show. However, I wish Nolan reprised his role of Raphael from the 2007 movie, since he voices both Master Splinter and the Shredder at the same time, and I wish this game had 30 or 50 levels instead of just 9. I used to play this game all the time, and I came across it again and see they got rid of it. Why? The gameplay is fire, fire emoji. The story is well written and follows the same characters and plot from the show, and it is genuinely fun to play. Don't know why the critics rate it so low. Bring it back! This is one of the best TMNT games since Out of the Shadows. Almost like that game, this one is fun, addicting, had great graphics, and a really awesome redesign of the Ninja Turtles. This is one of the best incarnations of TMNT. It's amazing, I don't want to spoil it, but the Krang is so hard, I had to ask my cousin to do it, but you can go on easy mode if you would like to have a wonderful time playing this game. It's so amazing. It is the best game. The bosses are epic, the missions are cool, the graphics are excellent as well. You can choose different moves and switch between between Turtles overall really good. This is one of my favorite TMNT games and yes it's still fun in 2019 and I hope there are more TMNT games like this. Perhaps one of the best beat em ups I have ever played, it's really playable, the levels are really cool and the boss fights are really epic. I think you get the point, in fact out of all the reviews that I read on Google about this game there was only one that was actually a negative review and it was this one right here. Too much cell shading, but generic hitbox gameplay and the usual kid friendly turtles. What else do you expect? I mean, they're not going to make Ninja Turtles for adults until The Last Ronin. At least I hope that it's going to be for adults and I hope it has an M rating. The only other negative thing that I have seen mentioned about this game is there is no couch co-op. If that's really the only real big issue of this game, then I would say go play it. I guess the biggest downside about this game for me is that the only place you can really get this game is anywhere that sells physical copies, like already used copies. I wouldn't recommend eBay or Mercari unless you want to spend upwards of 75 or or $100 for this game. My advice, get it from the GameStop app. That's where I got my copy because it was the cheapest, only at like 58 bucks. But all in all, I'm not going to call this video a review video, but I will say that the hate online is just a little unfair. Most of the hate is actually given by paid reviewers, but the consumers, the people that have actually played the game already, most of them really like it. So in my mind, I would prefer to listen to people that have actually played the game rather than the people that are paid to critique the game. But hey, hold your own opinion, there's a lot to love and a lot to unpack in this game. 
Now, if you really want to know my insight, the two biggest cons that I will give in my personal opinion, well, obviously there is no couch co-op and there's just a lot of chaos going on on your screen since you're always with all four of the turtles. That there's just a lot going on. And the other thing I guess is just a lack of non-enemy NPCs. The game has sections where you are in the city at night going on rooftops or even on the streets, but there are no regular NPCs that are you know not trying to kill you and to me that just takes a little bit of life away from the game but other than that I thought the game was pretty good and completely recommended but like I said hold your own opinion I will say this before I wrap this video up there are still people that actually play this game online I hopped into a session and it only took me a couple minutes to find three other people and we were doing missions as the Ninja Turtles like it was actually I had, I had, I had a lot more fun playing the online portion of this game than I did the actual story mode I had a lot of fun so even after all these years, today in 2024, this game is still played, even with how rare it is. And that's it for now. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. Now I think we should turn your attention to whoever is drawing out of the hat for the next game. You ready? Yeah. You ready? And go! <laughs> you got one. Let me see what it is. Yeah. Alright, good job. Let's see what it is. Uh, this is Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. That's technically three games, but <laughs> sweet. I like this game. Do you think? Nah. Come on, let's go. I'm thinking it's officially pizza time. Heck to the yeah, finally! I could eat a hundred by myself right now. Hey, do you think Bebop's giant money bag is still lying around? Mikey. Just kidding. But you gotta admit, 5,000 orders of breadsticks would totally rule. <laughs> <laughs>